yard here, we've got a Norwegian built eight meter. She was built by Anker and Jensen in 1948. And uh, we've got the forefoot out of the boat right now and the stem, and we're about to put some laminated frames in place of the major frames that were put in this boat. It's got a major frame, then it's got three minor frames that are bent, and the major frames are sawn. So some of the major frames are in bad shape at the bottoms where they were bolted to the floor timbers with iron bolts and steel. So what's happened is uh, that's all deteriorated and some of the ends of the frames are bad. So we're going to take this frame out completely all the way to the top and replace it with a laminated frame. And these were the bolts that held down through the floor timbers, the mast step, and through the keel into the ballast block. So we've removed a lot of bolting and what we've done is accessed this area and removed some interior because we wanted to replace these frames right here. And these two are actually down into a pocket that's been cut into the keel by myself a little bit wider than the original pocket. They had these tapered pockets that were in there that were kind of different than I've seen in the United States, but we dug the frame heel out of there and recut the pocket. And we've got the frame snubbed right down into the bottom of that pocket and right up against the deck nice and tight by uh, making a pattern of the outside laminate. And uh, you know we had to know exactly how long it would be because if it was too long it wouldn't snap into place and it was too short obviously it wouldn't be short of the deck or short down below now these frames here are frames that go right alongside the bulkhead so the bulkheads actually fastened off to the frames or at this point it's glued onto the framing and uh, these were minor frames this frame was identical to this frame when it was in the boat and the bulkhead was up alongside of that but it had also a chain plate and it originally had a steel chain plate that was laid on top of that frame and bolted down through and there was deterioration at the top end of it and there was also some deterioration down here where it was broken and different things so we set out to replace it now <clears throat> these were steam bent frames and uh, they're just twisted into place and then it's got some of the major frames would be these frames here much bigger this was an auxiliary frame that was put in sometime afterwards by someone else and they'd done a good job, they just didn't do enough of them. So we've left that in place. Now this is, gonna, this is a laminated frame here. Now this frame has a requirement that the faces of the frame, the fore and after faces, would be directly a thwart shift. So that frame is not a rectangle, it's a rhombus. And it lays against the planking, it also lays against the bulkhead. It's laminated out of a number of thin layers, approximately an eighth of an inch. And then it has a progressive bevel sawn saddle that it sits on. Because what would happen if you just were to take a pile of laminates that were just straight and laid it down on there, try to fasten it down, the head would want to cant off. The laminate will not lay against the hull. And I'm going to give you a little demonstration of that in another bay over here. Okay, I'm here at my ship saw and I'm just about to push this piece of wood through. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to progressively bevel it and it's going to come out the other side looking like this and what I'm going to do at that point is invert the two pieces like that. Now you have a rhombus but obviously it's not thick enough so that we're going to place the laminate pile which are all parallel laminates in between like that and that's what you have right there. Now that's going to go into the boat with this thicker pot aft on the starboard side up like that and the forward and after faces will be directly athwart ships and the inboard and the outboard uh, parallel to each other, the outboard side land right nice tightly against the plank. We've got the bevels written on the frame and as it goes by the saw blade I'll be calling those numbers out to the man on my left and he's cranking the arbor over to that degree. Now he's paying attention only to his degree readout and me calling him the numbers and I'm not watching him and he's not watching me. That's what's required. He's got his duty, I've got my duty. Now the reason why it changes bevel is because it's a different bevel required in every position along that frame. The top of the frame has very little bevel. As it gets to the turn of the bilge there's more bevel required and quite a bit less at the bottom of the frame. It's the cutoff off the end of the frame and you can see the beveled laminates and a stack of laminates in between and uh, we've taken a piece of this cut off and put a wood chisel on the glue line and tried to split it apart on the glue line and we can't do it 
It's substrate failure when you try it, which means that it rips the material right apart. That's how good the glue is. All right, we're spreading the epoxy on the laminates now at this point. Now this is a one-to-one -one mix and it's pre-thickened already. And uh, it's a setting epoxy and we don't have to add any additives in it or anything. We mix the two parts together and this is the finished product and we spread it on with a tooth trowel and that controls exactly how much glue we get on each laminate so we know we're not putting too much or too little. All right, we get another reservoir of it here. Just like that. So we've spread the glue on the laminate pile and now we're gonna add the very last pieces that makes the foundation up against the hull and then the piece that was opposite of that when we cut it that makes the finished piece on the inside. And I'm standing up with a reservoir in front of the trowel, but once I've got it done like that, that's an awful lot of glue on there, too much glue. So what I'm gonna do is put the trowel down on an angle like that and scoop it along from one end to the other like that. And look how much extra glue I'm gonna get off of there. Now I can just go ahead and do this one. This one's probably already been done. And that completes the spreading. We're gonna put a block of wood on the top and a clamp down so it doesn't slide all over creation. All right, what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna squeeze out the glue and all the air out from in between. 